Good morning. Well, this is the bus starting from the outside. You might have to turn your phone on its side to get the best picture from it. Um, so I'll just take you in without trying to take too much file space. So, entrance, uh, lights, heaps of lighting on the, on the entrance. Also remote controllable. It's the business end of the bus, the driver's portion. The little green things you see there are custom made opening adjusters. And both seats swivel, so, and there's a, you see the metal bar in the middle, which allows you to put a table. I've got a separate table that goes there, and with the seats turned around, um, it's you can eat at it without any trouble or do anything else for that matter. Keep Leave your typewriter on it or whatever. Uh, there's fire extinguisher there. There are three fire extinguishers throughout the bus. Uh, lockers up top. Heaps of locker space. All of them lit when you open the door. Right, turning around, there's a, you'll see a curtain there. There's a curtain rail right round the front bench seat, which you would have seen in the other photos. Um, converts to a bed. As you can see, it's quite a reasonable size bed. The curtains allow you to pull, be pulled right round, and it um, completely it makes it completely private. So you've got your own little room in there, even with a little bit of the skylight, which. Gives the occasional nice view if you can keep it clean. Um, above, you know, so it's turning right round again. Above the doorway is the flight control deck, basically all just a 12 volt control system there. Uh, it has um, tank monitors, which is empty at the moment. The grey tank has got something in it. Hot water control, either gas or electric uh, central heating. Set the temperature and turn it on and off. Uh, solar panel control, battery monitoring, a couple of manual switches here for inside outside lights and lights to tell you when you've got a full toilet. Um, gas supply is an emergency stop on it so that you can shut it off in a hurry if you need to. Just looking down and along the front of the bench. More cupboards. There's 24 cupboards and drawers in this front area. So there's not a lot of shortage of space for storing stuff. Probably too much. A three burner stove, grill, oven, rubbish and extra storage. Um, hot water cupboard sits under the sink. Also houses the Towel rack, tea towel rack, she pulls out all your washing gizmos, brush, shovel. Um, there's three, two, a drawer, two slide out pantries here. They hold quite a large amount of stuff between them. And I keep the little one up the top, I keep the hot water jug and the toaster up there, they fit quite nicely. That's for when you're plugged in, of course. Around the other way, uh, microwave, it's actually a microwave and convection oven. So you, when you're plugged in, you can run as an electric oven as well if you want to, or a microwave. And the fridge, three-way fridge. Um, it's not operating right now because we don't need anything, but... It, I fitted a, um, a light in it so it's good at night time as well. Space down the bottom there. I did have a small washing machine in it, but I didn't find it was that useful. The space was more useful. Now the cupboard here um, was originally the spot. I left the space quite deliberately for a fireplace. Now I've got the fireplace, but I've never put it in because I've never actually felt the need of it and it's quite heavy. So it's there, but I've never put it in. Uh, oh, carbon monoxide monitor, 
uh, fridge temperature monitor, uh, smoke alarm, and there's also a under the bench here. I'll see if I can take you down there. There's, a, there's monitors there for LPG down at the floor because LPG sinks. And you can see the vents there for the hot air outlet for the uh, central heating. Right, and turning around, heading down. This way, we've got our shower. Here. It provides the most useful place for storing the tables when I'm travelling. Uh, but it's got a full you know, shower outfit in it. It's the bath mat hanging up there. The bar it's hanging on comes out if you're tall enough you can take that out but it, it's a very good place to put wet coats and things because they just drip into the shower uh, around the other side here is the bathroom or the washroom so you're going to get my mug in it as well but it's a full length dress mirror on the back of the door the door itself actually divides the bus neatly in half you can close it in either position and you get two separate living areas and it's quite good at keeping the noise down so one can go to bed with a headache and the other the other people at the front can stay and talk if, if there's anybody there. Bathroom. Um, fairly standard I guess. Um, two lighting systems, either the LEDs or the fluorescent between the two of them they make a pretty good light in there I don't think you'd have any trouble doing things like makeup and stuff that was my wife's part of the design she wanted those things so I put that in storage down the bottom keep all the spare toilet rolls and, uh, and disinfectant for the toilet toilet is a cassette one operating instructions on the wall um, Vent up the top, as it's also in the shower. Um, and blinds, you can pull right down if necessary if you want. don't want light on the outside. Turning around now to the bedroom. Um, just right beside the shower is a full-length wardrobe. Again, lighting in it. And a few, at the moment, men's clothes. Iron, for a little iron storage up the top. Clothing. Heaps of shoes and boots, and that's the vacuum cleaner, that white thing you can see there. I stick it in there when we travel so it doesn't fall over. And my guest didn't pull the curtain back out of the way this morning. Uh, the curtain, oh, curtain, yes, provides further privacy. If you want to have more than one person or two people on the bus, you can do it. You pull the curtain across and it divides it off quite neatly from the rest of the, the vehicle and so both of you have access to the toilet and bathroom without disturbing the other unnecessarily or invading privacy. There's the bedroom, back a wee bit and it's got a skylight in this one too, opens as well for ventilation. Um, the blinds you see are pretty unusual, I've never seen them in any other vehicle before but they are pull down and pull up so they actually go in both directions. I find them very good because usually what you find is you want to get a bit of light in but you don't want to lose your privacy so when they're fully up like that you can just pull them down far enough to get light and ventilation without losing your privacy and they find that they're great and they've also got an insulation value of about 3.6 I'm told their double cellular construction. So bed, um, double bed, it's probably a little unusual in that you can you can actually move it. If you're on your own you move it to the side you like or away from the side you like so you've got maximum room and you can it just means it's it also makes it easier to make the bed and to use the drawers because there's eight drawers under the bed so I generally operate it when I'm on my own. I'll move it to the left. And um, I'll stop that for a minute. 
on the lady's side of the bed has a, a little teacup rest there as well because we like having our tea in bed but not only that it lifts up and then you have access to the radio and the record player and storage underneath which as you can see is uh, well used but that's quite a handy feature uh, while we're there the switch on the end here is a night light um, it's got a permanent light on it so it, you can't see it in the daytime but at night time you can just see it where it is so you can find it in the night to turn it on to go to the toilet you turn the switch on and there's um, lights around the bottom of the bed and into the toilet which light the area along the way right and then you were talking about having a bedroom out the back well at the moment it's actually my workshop but the door is an internal door that allows you to go through it and a couple of steps down and you're into the workshop area unfortunately it tends to become a general junk collection area sometimes when we're traveling but I do use it as a workshop when I've got something to fix uh, not everything in here of course would go with the bus the chest of drawers not um, but these cupboards probably would and they they contain a lot of stuff and I put all my construction materials in it when I was building it. I built it from the back end here, basically. And, yeah, and you can also lock this, lock it from this, the inside. So if somebody's in the workshop, they can't get into your area. Oh, that pulls down. That's my little tea, tea stand for beside the bed. Bit of lighting control if you want it. Bit of mood lighting. Maybe just a quick look of front on the outside of what you can see. Uh, there it is. It's parked up in the renewal at the moment. Can't show you the same view of the other side, unfortunately, because it's all kind of tucked in here a little bit. Uh, the water and uh, waste lockers just down there. I'm going to say the locker; it's just the access to it. The actual tanks are built into the bus. There's 300 litres of each, fresh and grey water. Um, battery locker just down there Ex external access to the workshop here it's difficult to get it all in one shot even with a wide angle lens I'm afraid if it's full of our junk at the moment the entire length of that those two lockers is available. Now the left hand end houses the uh, the um, central heating system, which is quite small. It's a four kilowatt system. On the front, the spiders seem to love it as much as I do, but uh, they can be dealt with on a day to day basis. And back where we started from.